All right, guys, so here we are at First Colony Mall in Sugarland, Texas, a suburb of Houston. Uh, as an author, I get bored sitting at the computer at home, so I like to write out and about. Um, this is one of the places that I typically end up going to. So I'm gonna take you inside. We're gonna get a seat, set up my laptop, and I'll share a little bit about uh, everything that I'm working on and what I'm facing and getting ready to head overseas. So anyway, in a nutshell, I've made the decision to teach English abroad. And what I'm gonna do in this blog vlog series is cover every aspect of that process. So if you're interested in teaching abroad as a possible career path, I hope to provide some insight that you may not have found elsewhere. And if you're not looking at it as a career path, then I hope you at least find it interesting to follow me on my journey. So I'm roughly three months out from my flight to Vietnam. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about what brought me here and what I'm doing today. So once I made the decision that teaching abroad was for me, my first step was deciding where I'm going to teach. I did a ton of research on countries like Thailand, China, the Philippines, Taiwan, South Korea, you name it. And ultimately, I came up with a decision based on my own research that Vietnam seemed the best opportunity initially. Wait, once I had made the final decision that Vietnam is where I'm going to go, the next step was what course am I going to attend? Because obviously, to teach English abroad, you need certification. Now, AVSE, I'm not saying it's the premier school for learning to teach English abroad but it is a reputable uh, school that's been around for some time. And according to the reviews that I've looked at, the students have been very happy with their experience. So that's ultimately why I decided to go with them. Cost was also a factor. I wanted to make sure that whichever school that I chose, that they would provide both accommodations during training and job placement assistance. Now, so in my situation, I've decided on country, Vietnam, I've decided on school, AVSC, for my TESOL certification. And I have accommodations provided as part of the school's package. And uh, they'll help me find a job afterwards. But I also have the backup of, should it take a long time to find a position, I know that I'm covered to survive comfortably month to month while in country. So once all those factors were dealt with, it became time to start looking at the details. And that's where I'm at today, really, is dealing with the details. Now, on my website, in my blog section, I've posted some details about my own personal budgeting, packing lists, plans, etc., to kind of detail the whole process from start to finish so that you can get an idea of exactly what I'm facing and, and what I've done to overcome obstacles. So today, I just wanna give you a general idea of what's going on, what my plans are, what I'm gonna be sharing in this blog vlog series, and um, give you a few specifics today. For example, I wanted to start today with, and I'm gonna to refer to my notes, I wanted to start with uh, the finances behind it because that's a huge factor. And so I'll share a little bit about my situation. So as a U.S. citizen, uh, I'm going to be traveling on a tourist visa initially to Vietnam. And they offer us, a tw Vietnam offers a 12-month multi-entry tourist visa where you have to exit the country every three months. And that's perfectly fine with me. Now, I am intending at some point on pursuing a work permit and business visa. But that's gonna come down the roads. Now, in my situation, that's, I'm gonna go the visa on arrival route, and that's about a $20 fee on a site like Visa, or Vietnam Visa Pro.net, uh, where they provide you with the basic forms that need to be filled out, and they provide a approval letter uh, for you to enter the country. 
And then upon entry at the airport, I'll give those documents to the immigration's representative and they'll review them, stamp my visa and charge me an additional $125 fee. So the whole cost of the visa is a little less than $150. The course itself, the one that I've chosen is $1,749. The flight for me from Houston uh, in the US to Ho Chi Minh City is gonna run about $600. So the point is, the cost associated with this endeavor is not insignificant. Uh, you, you definitely need to plan ahead if this is something that you want to do um, and pursue as a career path. So the other big thing related to costs is knowing timelines. Uh, there is deadlines for when you need to place your deposit in order to be able to hold the position for your class. There's deadlines on when to pay the balance for the class. There's changes in expense for flights based on how soon you book them. And the same goes for your hotel stay until your provided accommodations are available. So I think getting a head start is really important. And as I said, for me, three months out seems a very reasonable amount of time to get all that dealt with. Also, I want to mention some other things that I'm dealing with as of today, currently. Um, I'm working on things like you, they might seem mundane, but packing list. Uh, I'm researching what do people typically bring? What do you need? What are the weather conditions for the time of year that I'm traveling to the country? Uh, what's appropriate attire when out and about? What's appropriate attire in the classroom when working? Um, so I want to make sure that I whittle down my packing list to the least amount of stuff possible to have to bring, obviously to conserve space and weight, etc. but to make sure that I have everything I'm gonna need with me. Another thing that I'm doing at the moment is I'm looking at health issues, and I think that's huge. And it's not a topic that I see often discussed in these forums, but I personally really believe it's a huge factor you should consider if you're gonna pursue this sort of career. Uh, as far as my situation, when I talk about health factors, what I mean is I've scheduled a new vision exam uh, where I'm going to get a 12-month supply of disposable contacts after my new exam. Um, I've scheduled an appointment with various doctors to make sure that all of my pre-existing medical conditions are evaluated before I leave and that I have proper medications supplied before I leave. Again, trying to seek at least a 90-day supply or more uh, before I head out. Uh, and also to make sure that I have all of my medical records, my vaccinations in order, printed out and ready to take with me before I get on that plane. I need confirmation. I don't believe everything that I read and I know there's false information out there on the internet and places. So what I like to do is build a community resource base. And I recommend you do the same. And in doing that, what I recommend is you look based on the country you want to go to, uh, based on the school you want to attend, you look for alumni and then contact them. Build a report, send some emails or post some comments or, or whatever it takes to just develop that initial connection. And once you have a connection, make sure to record uh, the communicative ones, the ones that are willing to respond. And eventually, hopefully in fairly short order, you'll build a fairly solid base of a community of support. So when I have a question, my first step is do my research on the internet. Um, then once I've found what seems to be the right answer, my next step is to go to my support community that I've developed and ask all of them individually what their thoughts or perspective is on the issue. And then I get good feedback. And I use that feedback to determine what's the most likely scenario here. And I, the best example I can give you is with cost of living. I mentioned before that for me, I need to know that in the worst case scenario, I can live comfortably off of $1,000 a month in the area from my dis current disposable income. 
So in asking that to my, in researching it, I found, yes, that sounds like it should be the case. But to confirm that and asking my support community, I found that almost without exception, they all confirmed that yes, that is more than enough to live a comfortable, maybe slightly frugal, but definitely comfortable lifestyle in Vietnam. So that's what I do. And that's what I recommend you do is build that support base and then utilize it. Don't take anything you read on the internet as absolute and don't take one person's opinion as absolute. Get as many answers, as many responses as you can on every question you have so that you can be well prepared for whatever may come. So anyway, with that said, today I've told you a little bit about my plans, a little bit about what the David Maxwell Goes to Vietnam blog is going to be about. And uh, I've shared a little bit of my personal efforts at the moment. As we go forward, I, like I said, I will share budgets, I'll share documents, uh, I'll share experiences, photos, videos, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between about this journey from the point of now, my decision to go, uh, throughout my travel, uh, my training, and my eventual employment in Vietnam and abroad. And I hope you'll enjoy what I have to say. For those of you who are interested in maybe pursuing this as a career path, I sincerely hope that something that I share might save you some time or offer a thought that you may not yet have considered. Uh, because it is a big move. It's a big change in life. And you definitely want to have all the possible information that you can find. And so my goal is to help provide some of that information where otherwise it may be lacking out there.